You're welcome back to The Breakfast. We now have joining us one of the press chief uh, a lecturer at the Nigeria Institute of Journalism, Mr. Jide Johnson. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning to our uh, viewers. All right. Let's begin with the Punch newspaper this morning. And the big story here we see is differential wage bill or your Delta, Gumbi, others back National Assembly as labor fumes. And McIndays aide saying uh, it refre reflects true federalism and states should pay according to their internally generated revenue. Uh, well, it's unfair to expect Gumbi to pay same wage as Lagos, uh, Commissioner insists. And Kano, uh, NLC chair, says bill dead on arrival, says NLC Delta, and it's against workers' interest. Reps threaten to arrest pension administrators for shunning probe. FG or 5G deployment may undermine Nigeria's security, says ONSA. $10.7 trillion spent on fuel subsidy in 10 years, and that's according to Momen. And uh, about vaccines, federal government plans supplementary budget, says $31 billion dollar loan, not high. And that's about the uh, borrowing to fund the budget we just spoke about earlier. BPP confirms contract scam in PRODA, reps threats in DG. Kidnappers demand 100 million naira to free UI students. Service chiefs fire me present as seven NAF jets crash victims buried. CJ accuses Akira Dulu assembly of plot to unseat her. Man sentenced to death, 10 year imprisonment for murder in AKT. And uh, after signing agreement with FG, varsity workers end strike. And lastly here, Usman saying agencies disobeyed Ocean Badgers on 24 hour port operations. Um, so Judy Johnson, those are the stories here. And uh, it seems the biggest one here is about the differential wage bill and the different stance of the different state governors uh, regarding this matter. I'll tell you, we allow each state to negotiate and pay according to the prevailing economic circumstances in states. We'll, we'll still be having problem with the issue of uh, minimum wage. If you're operating in federalism, that talks about you having three tiers of government, the local, federal, and state government. Why should someone walking in Kumbi collect the same amount of money on the same level with someone working in Lagos? The standard of living, the cost of living varies. And then the sources of internally generated revenue is just because that uh, we don't practice fiscal federalism. We practice fiscal federalism. I'm sure there's nobody that will tell the governor to pay according to what they are generated internally. Some of us have been looking forward to this. It should not only be peculiar to the um, civil servant, it should also go to every sector. Every sector. Why should you pay doctors um, the same amount of money? A doctor in Lagos and a doctor in, in Shokoto in Zamfara, or a lecturer in Lagos or a lecturer in Zamfara, the same amount. It's not the same cost of living. It's what we practice in Nigeria. And it's antithetical to growth, it's antithetical to development. If you look at the um, overhead cost of government, um, in fact, if you break the budget of Nigerian down, you discover that um, the current expenditure is much more than capital expenditure, and there's no way any nation can grow. Um, let labor fight to that deal. If we really want this country to grow, and if we want competition to exist, Right. Um, among the states, uh, which Johnson. we foster development, I think this is the way and um, the way to 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 go. Let me I let me clarify. Can you hold on? Jude Johnson, can you hold on? Let me clarify exactly yeah. um, how this works. Um, it makes a lot of sense that you know uh, a worker in Gombe shouldn't earn you know what a Lagos you know worker or an Abuja worker is earning. Uh, but d d you've seen that they've also struggled, even with the increment in minimum wage. 
How do you think that you know, you know, they would be able to cope? And do you think that this might also make these states decide that you know, they might go back to the previous minimum wage since, well, the IGR is not the same with Lagos? Um, because you know, regardless of what the IGR is, it's, you know, cost of living is still very, very high. And so you know, wh whichever state that doesn't have that IGR um, should be able to maintain this one that we're currently using while Lagos maybe increases their wage um, uh, to their, um, their workers? You know, you can't legislate on, on some of these things. You, nationally, you can't legislate on some of these things. For I'll give you an example. The present administration in the United States is trying to legislate on the national minimum wage, um, which should be $15, $15 per hour. And what you could see, every small and medium scale enterprises screaming and shouting that this will kill business. Um, is, if, so if you want to legislate on which, also you should also legislate on um, on what we pay as, as, as rent, as what people should pay as rent, and what we should pay as medical bills. Let each state determine what it's going to pay each or a worker. It's very, very important. That is the way to go. And that is the way for us to solve this problem of incessant strike. Strikes destroy the economy. You know, the, it destroys the economy. It, it takes away human lives. If there is a, strike, if there is a national strike by, by, by the National Association of Medical Doctors in Nigeria or nurses or the rest of it, they go on strike nationally. And then during that period, what happened? It will, we always look at the financial cost. We don't look at the human human cost. So as far as I am concerned, I think this is the way to go, and we should support the governors. It's just a matter of time, like you said. If some states are not paying, what they will lose labor. It's, it's, it's very, it's very good. one of the key elements why we're in school when we did economics is that labor is mobile. Migration, people move from one place. If the pay is good, why are people migrating from Nigeria to Canada, to Australia, to United States of America? People living white collar jobs they are doing here and they are going to those countries to do jobs either to they wouldn't have done in, in Nigeria. So it's 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 important for us to understand that um we can't continue to do this like we used to do in the 60s and the 70s. Even in the 60s and the 70s, when we operate regional government, each of that side Nigeria, if you check the growth rate of Nigeria and the development Nigeria, each region pays according to what 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 obtains in its own region. And that's why there was competition between the north, northern region, the western region, and the eastern region. And we saw labor moving from the east to the north, the north to the east, and the rest right. of it. So it's very, very important. It's a crucial thing. There's, we shouldn't be sentimental about, about this. It's just the right step and the, for us to take and the right direction that we need to move if we actually want to develop. All right, Mr. G.D. Johnson, let's uh, turn our focus to something uh, being said here by the Major Oil Marketers Association of Nigeria, Moman. It says here on the front page of the punch that $10.7 trillion was spent on fuel subsidy in 10 years. What do you think about 10 that? 10.7 trillion. 10 .7 trillion Naira. 10.7 trillion dollars. Which subsidy? The present administration... If there's an administration that has taken Nigeria for a ride and has taken us for a fool, um, I think it's the present administration. Um, I recall when Jonathan increased, Jonathan administration increased the bond price. Majority of those that are actors and players in government today were in um, Ojota. Um, yours truly, too, was part of protest in, in, as a part of key organizers in my community. And just for Jonathan increasing the bond price by some few, 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 few nairas. And, and uh, what have we witnessed under this administration? They've increased the pump prices over and over again, telling us that, okay, last time they, they said, we are no longer paying subsidy. And before we know it, we are paying subsidy. Who is the second group? Only God knows um, what is happening. I think we should privatize NNPC, let private companies operate NNPC, and Nigeria should get them, um, um, Payments from it from the privatization. If you are not pri privatize the telecom sector, just imagine what 
will have happened with the telecom sector. The telecom sector was privatized and then um, private investors were allowed because it was totally under government control. But I asked you whether it's Intel. Intel had advantage over Intel, over, over Econet, over MTN. But we are day to day, they have the infrastructure, they have, they have, they have heritage, but look at what is happening in the, in the, in the telcos. So we need to look at that. And then government, successive government, those ones that have been headed by mili former military industry, they have pocketed the Ministry of Petroleum. Now the Ministry of Petroleum Resources had, has been under this present president. It was under our passenger too. And there seems to be a sick Great court going on concerning the how what type of resources we get in and what type, how much amount of money are we paying as a subsidy. As far as I'm concerned, they are just deceiving themselves. Okay. I'm not I'm, I'm not believing government. When government says they are paying subsidy, I believe that some people are cutting on us Let's move uh, to... from, from this particular subsidy. Because if they really want to deal with this issue, the issue of refinery will have been dealt with. What, how many years would it take us to build the refinery? How many? Right. Why should Let's we be quickly move to... a major exporter of crude oil and then a major importer of petroleum products? Right. Let's, need to let's move to the Nigerian Tribune. And for those ones, um, Julie Johnson. All right, let, let's move to the Nigerian Tribune. I'm um, hoping some of all these other stories would come up and you can once again uh, speak on them. Um, it says there, Kagara abduction. Federal government has abandoned us, and that's from the Niger state governor. Makinde kicks over plans to postpone Southwest PDP's zonal Congress. Anxiety grows over safety of road users on Lagos Ibadan Expressway. And the finance minister says Nigeria needs more borrowing to roll out infrastructure. Federal government trains 13,000 healthcare workers on COVID-19 vaccination exercise. And farmers' head as clashes threaten food security. Senate president raises alarm. Also, Chasing after PDP members won't help APC on economy and insecurity. That's from Uche Sekondis. Uh, alleged two billionaire pension fraud court denies may not bail. Arrival of COVID-19 vaccines will restore normalcy in Nigeria. And uh, President Buhari sidesteps amnesty talk, vows to deal with bandits and insurgents. Uh, finally, 2023, some South-South governors planning to join Umahi in APC. And that is from Akbabio. All right. Um, I think we would quickly speak on the president's response to the amnesty talk um, and uh, the idea of uh, negotiating with bandits. Uh, let, let's get your thoughts on that first. It is, um, it's a welcome development. And I think that the president should have taken a stance. Long time ago, but... When I listen to the clip of uh, that bandit, when he was there, I said he's programmed... Um, we, even the media organization that reported it, we are trying to legitimize um, terrorism by saying that they are fighting for a particular cause. Are they just waking up today to tell us that they are fighting for a particular cause? Their handlers have prepared them so that to provide a justification for um, them making this nation by government trying to negotiate and um, re rehabilitating them. When you rehabilitate, repentant uh, Boko Haram, and so bandits still will wake up today and say that, okay, they too want to be rehabilitated, we want to train them to be paid in foreign currencies. Because it pays more. Nigeria is a, is a nation that rewards criminality. Criminality, that's, that's all we do. So that statement coming from the president is a welcome, is a welcome development. And I think that will match the words with action for us to deal with this issue of banditry. It's not even in banditry. Insurgency is terrorism. Now, insurgency is... is, um, is is an act to bring down a government. That's that's that that itself should be a serious issue that government should do, should deal with. So I think um, it's a welcome development. The right. statement by the Senate President um, that food insecurity as a result of is he just waking up from his slumber? What has he done to address this issue? He's been in the National Assembly since 1999. He's he's been fortunate to be the leader and then the Senate President. If, um, but I've said it over time, history is what will place this particular um, night assembly in their rightful position. Both himself and Femi Kajabiamila, history will rightly place himself. Because they struggle to lead the, 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 the eight 
um, assembly and um, they were rewarded with it in this current assembly. Oh, uh, but what are they provided in terms of leadership? All right. What have they provided in terms of providing solutions to some of the challenges we are having nationally, security, economy, and the rest, and the rest of it? So, in food insecurity, we only quite all right that if you don't resolve crises between between the problem, it's an essential commodity in the agricultural sector. So, you need to resolve that particular issue. You don't have to play. The uh, right. street when it comes Quickly. when it comes when it comes to that and you are from the northeast you know how this issue affect farmers in the northeast yeah. and how it affect farmers all over the country and all right you are Quick, just quickly let's also get what you solution has it provided. Yeah, um, and of course there was a clip yesterday of uh, members of National Assembly also making similar statements, um, saying that um, history will of course judge Ahmed Lawan, but. Let's move over to the Minister of Finance, uh, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, uh, saying that Nigeria would continue uh, to borrow to fund the infrastructure deficit in the country. Uh, quickly share your thoughts on that one before we move to another paper. You see, I have no problem when government borrows money to, 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 to develop infrastructure. In actual sense, most countries borrow money to develop infrastructure because once you build infrastructure, the infrastructure lasts for 50, 60, 70, 100 years if quality jobs are done. That means that those that you are borrowing for your children, preparing for them to come and enjoy, they too will enjoy the service and that um, the infrastructural facilities that you have provided for. As long as you do the right thing with the money, as long as you don't put these resources in your private pocket, and as long as you are doing quality jobs, now, if you look, I, I tell people, look at the Kurodu Road. The Kurodu Road was constructed in the 70s. Imagine if that was not conceptualized as far back as then. How many cars were on Lagos Road then? Then, the Kurodu Road does not have an open train system. The Kurodu Road has a sewage system. If we could conceptualize the Kurodu Road, as far back as early 70s, my mom was from my mom was from Fadi, born and brought up in Fadi. So I know it could do like the back of my hand. I know how narrow it used to be. If you conceptualize that in the 70s, in the 70s, you can't see the drain system of the road road. And then you can now see what these ones are doing. You'll be shocked. Roads that don't last. Um, and I can give another example of another road. If you look at Kudra at Abiola, the Abiola Way was done, was started in 1999, completed in 2001 on If you still go, every time you drive through that road, you thank government, oh, when well, that road was commissioned, I think it was 100 million dollars that was spent on that project, and people were screaming. But every time you pass through that road and you drive, you can leave your steering and drive without holding your steering. So when government borrow money to do projects, they should do the right thing, not that put the money and do what we call in my local dialect, shagbelodio, your kind of jobs. And most of the jobs they are doing are shagbelodio. Then you begin to wonder, those that constructed roads, those that built infrastructure in the past, what were they thinking of? And what are these present people thinking of today? I am not against borrowing money, but you should monitor and ensure that there's quality in whatever projects you are doing, and those projects will become legacy projects, projects that can last decades. And right. children that you borrow money that will come and pay the debts, we know that they are enjoying the services that you have borrowed money to build. All right, Mr. G.D. Johnson, let's go to the Nation newspaper and we see that same story on the top page. It says here, we're taking loans for Nigeria's progress, according to Finance Minister. But away from that now, uh, governor, federal government has neglected abducted peoples still, you know, with this situation of the Kagara boys abduction in Niger State. And he says, with or without support, they will be back. And President Isos here saying they are not abandoned. Four policemen in Mufti killed in Calabar checkpoint. Mena stays in jail. Buhari orders warm bandits, kidnappers, criminals 
court or case interim forfeiture of Imo assets, you know, dated to Okorocha. And this one here says, Lagos government NPA to truck drivers vacates a papa. And Makinde Fire Chief feud over zonal congress deepens. Nasu Sanu suspends strike. Man castrates self to curb his libido. Do we, do we turn to something lighter as we wrap up here, looking at this story on the front page of uh, the Nation newspaper, man castrated himself to curb his libido? Well, it's his personal decision. It's his body. And um, uh, his libido has not to do with this, with his, um, with his um, private organ. It has to do with his mind. Um, the mind is very, very powerful. I think what he should have gone for, he should have gone for a therapy. And then um, without him, if he needs it tomorrow, what is he going to do with it? How is he going to procreate? So if his libido is strong, that is um, the way his body is wired. And I think um, he should have seek um, medical help and see with a psychologist and a psychiatrist to deal with that particular uh, particular issue. Now, if he has the urge, how is he going to how is he going to satisfy that particular? That particular or how he's going to burn his passion. So he's just um, killing, killing his, um, biting uh, his nose in order to spite his face. I don't think that anyone needs to do, anyone needs to do that. Uh, because in my later, uh, if I, I, can't, I can't even imagine, I can't even imagine uh, him living and surviving without him having the use of the, the passion and the the gift that God has given to him to enjoy the pleasures the pleasures of the pleasures of of, of life. I completely agree with you, sir. All right. Anyway, there's there's more to this story. Definitely, definitely more to this story. But away from the light topics, uh, this one here says uh, Lagos government and MPA to truck drivers saying vacate a papa. We've heard this directive time and time again, but it seems that we, we, our hands are really tied when it comes to making sure that... The tanker drivers are Lord and the master of the road. They are... Who are the owners of the tankers? It is not the driver you should deal with. Who are the owners? And I think we need... Who are the owners? Are they the owners of the nation? They are untouchable. Federal government set up a task force headed by Okwefa. The vice president was there, successive administration. I think um, the administration that has been able to deal decisively with them was Fashola's administration. And they came up with a policy that if you are moving, if you are heavy, articulated vehicles can only move in the night and the rest of it. Uh, if federal government can solve it, uh, uh, is, it is it MPA? And then um, the state government that will solve the problem. I, I don't know those people. They are untouchable. They 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 are more or less like elders too, and they can't. Um, that's those. There, there's 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 a level of impunity by some certain people operating in certain trades. And this is this is not trying to be. To be to be tribalistic or whatever. All you need to do is to look at those that dominate that industry. Which part of the country are they from? Which part of the country? Do you see anybody trading in 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 currency on the road in any part of the world? Like we see in Nigeria, do you see people moving with AK forty seven and moving with 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 their own goods, destroying other people's goods? Do you see people using the road? And the usage of the road, they, they control and corner the road and make road inconvenient for every other part, for, for every, other, every other users of the road. These traits that I've identified, where, which section of this country are these people from? Mm. Oh, but it's not, it's not you know, th this, is, this is also very um, likely with, you know, the, the conversation we've had lately about um, Colin Fulani, people a certain name and describing them in a certain way and you know the presidency and every you know a lot of other people have tried to say do not you know call Fulani criminals 
and there are you know bad elements in you know in, in their midst and all of that. So isn't it very similar to saying that when, there's a when 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 we begin you see if you have a nation, a nation is a nation with borders. Without borders, there are no nation. One, two. What makes a nation is the respect for its rules and laws. If there are no laws and there are no rules and there are no borders, there are no nation. Yeah, but my, my point, have, the point I'm trying to make is, you know, shouldn't, shouldn't we address the challenge directly instead of, you know, attaching it to a particular tribe or a particular should, set group of people? There's no need for political correctness in dealing with the problem. There's no need for political correctness. What do we need political correctness for? A terrorist, the ter what is the word terrorist is from the word terror. What is terror? When you make life uncomfortable, inhumane for others. So you have domestic terrorists, you have foreign terrorists. So playing on words, bandits, insurgents, militants, we are not addressing the problem. When government rewards criminality, when government rewards criminality, this is what you get. There, there is, Jenny Johnson, there is, there is, and apologies because yeah. we're, we're, we're out of time, but you know, there is an obvious failure of a system to checkmate that problem. Um, consecutive, you know, um, governors of Lagos State have done, you know, their own surveys. They've made their statements. The vice president, I remember a couple of years ago, even has this helicopter shot, you know, where he was, you know, looking through a papa and trying to, you know, make um, changes, but nothing seems to be, you know, to have been done. Um, and I think, you know, once again, you know, we, we need to remind the government that it should fix the systems that should be in place to ensure that that problem is sorted, um, regardless of who or what part of the country um, these people who, you know, um, populate that business are from. Um, I see. The yeah, systems must yeah, be fixed. What you know, in Abakuda, as one of the deepest what I know do, why can government create diverse, why, why would a papa be the only port we utilize. Oh, once are, again, uh, Nigeria has one of the deepest waters. Can't we have another port in Undo, one in Kodakot, one in Benin, and in Calabar, there's one and in, in the southeast, one in Calabar. Yeah. Why, why, why can't we so that so that we can we can decongest? That's the solution. Because oh, if one, we once do again, this, a failure. Also provide solution. Why does government not let them borrow money? To right. do that, well, we're out of borrow time. money to well, do that. Well, not well. only doing roads. If they are not being taken, but an Apapa port, if they are not done in those days, those times, would we be using them now? Which ports have they built in the last 30 years in Nigeria? Mr. Thank you very much. Sorry. Jude Johnson, you know, once again, a failure of, um, you know, um, systems uh, to checkmate these problems. Thank you very much. Uh, for your thoughts and it's for your on this conversation we've had this it's morning. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. It's Absolutely. A to be with Thank you, you. This morning. All right. But it seems really that we're not short of solutions that we can implement to make life better for everybody. Yeah. We're always still stuck at the point of execution. And it's just so sad that we keep talking about the same thing. We all know what we should do about it, but it's, it doesn't get done. We have some of the most brilliant minds in the world. Indeed. Um, Nigerians, you know, have been praised for their um, solutions that they've, you know, given to different sectors in the world. But here in Nigeria, those same brilliant minds have continued to prefer solutions. We've had conversations a billion times about a papa. We've had um, conversations about security, about healthcare, everything. Um, but implementation, um, political will, and, uh, you know, some of all those things that we just completely lack. Um, corruption also has uh, led us to continue to have these conversations decades Over and later. over and over again. All right. Anyway, let's uh, turn our minds back to history after this break.